get complicated at this time of year. Brad Benson's going to name his pit bull Dexter. <laughs> Probably pet him. He might bite. <laughs> it looks like he's already been bit. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But you know, if you're an offensive lineman, you don't worry about how you look anyway. You know, you don't worry. You know, how do I look? Is my hair? Now you got nose. You got stuff hanging off you. It's no big deal. Trader gets it to Brown, who can't hang on. Lawrence Taylor. He has been. The typical dominating force to again today. Oh, yeah, and that shows the type of respect that they have for each other. But look at where he's lined up today. 60 times over there on that left side of the Redskin offense. Three times in the middle, seven times over there on the right side. That's where he was going to go to work. This is his day. I'll tell you, that is a pretty good day. That's an active day. Giants will just run it out now. The Redskins out of timeouts. Giants have all of theirs. They run it down to a minute 25. Lawrence Taylor. You know, the amazing thing about Lawrence Taylor is he's been doing that with a bad shoulder, too. Now, he's been playing the last month with a bad right shoulder. Bill Parcells was trying to give him one more speech. Notice he does most of his hugging with his left arm and shoulder. Parcells was giving him the point job. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they got the bucket down there to pour on the coach. This is I, one I, game they ought to pour it on. I don't see it. I think they're going to Here get it, it comes. Now. Here, Here it comes. comes. You knew that that had to come. <laughs> but you, there they go. You see, there's excitement. There's things happen. The coach doesn't know. He's still going. Whoa! <laughs> they didn't get him on top of the head. There have been times when it was a lot colder than this. Uh, I think that he's playing the Redskins and beating them in RFK. And to me, this assures him of the division title. I would take it on the head. I would think so. It might assure him of some individual titles as well. That's not a concern. 24 to 14. For John Madden and Irv Cross, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the final score was the Giants 24, the Redskins 14. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Coming up next on the NFL Today, the postgame show with Brent Musburger with scores and highlights from around the league, as well as a complete playoff picture update. Brent Musburger. What an impressive win by the Giants. I want to remind everybody that next Saturday, the season premiere of college basketball, Arizona and Georgetown, that will precede what now is a tremendously important game for the Washington Redskins. The NFL today will start it off, and Washington will be in Denver. Let's go to Irv Cross in RFK. Irv? Hey, Brent, of course, obviously these two guys are very happy, but let me throw something on you, Phil and, and LT. Listen to this. The Giants have not won two games on the road in the month of December since 1955. Did you know that? No, I didn't know, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's happened to this football team? We saw you earlier in the season, and Phil Sims was talking about maybe not having the confidence he should have, but by God, you look like a confident quarterback now. Well, I have been the last three, four, five weeks. You know, uh, coach told me, look, just go out and play hard, and if you make mistakes, don't worry about it. And and he believed in me, and I think it had a lot to do with it. And I play like that, and it. When I play that away, that's when I'm best. I'm going to make some mistakes, but everybody does in this game. You can't worry about it. Well, one guy everybody worries about is number 56, Lawrence. You just had, as you have been, game in and game out, a tremendous football game. But today, you were just awesome. Huh? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you and Jacoby, you seem to handle them all day. Why? Well, um, Jacoby's a great player, but, you know, um, great players play uh, great games and big games. And, you know, I talked to my dad um, earlier this week, and I told him, um, this is the game that you know we've all been waiting for, so we was going out there and play hard, and uh, we got out and did what we had to do to win. Well, do you think 
this giant, well, our quarterback left, so I'm stuck with the defense. That's okay. That's right, Come that's on, right. let's hey, get in there. People. You know, we hear about people talking about this giant team being a team of destiny. You know, halftime, 14-7, you know, but uh, you came back in the third quarter and just took control. Is this a team of destiny? Well, I think, uh, you know, I believe in fate, and uh, I think uh, right now we're destined to do something great this year, and, and hopefully it's the Super Bowl, but I'm uh, really not sure. But um, right now we're winning. We're winning pretty good, and... Um, no matter what kind of adversary we face, we find a way to win, and that's what's important. Okay. Thanks a lot, Lawrence, and congratulations. Thanks thank for you. being with us. All right, thank you. Brent. All right, Irv, thank you very much. Again, what an impressive performance. Now, the Cardinals and Eagles in overtime. The Cardinals on fourth down. And moments ago, they set up to attempt this field goal by Schubert, but Reggie White blocked it. And so the beat goes on in Philadelphia with the Cardinals and the Eagles tied at 10 and Matt Cavanaugh has just checked into quarterback the Eagles and the NFL Today post game show sponsored by Miller Lite continues in a moment. Let's get you up to date with the scores at the moment. The Chicago Bears, a big explosion. Doug Flutie is impressive. They want to run up points. It's important if they wind up in a tie with the Washington Redskins. That's why the Bears are pouring it on today. 48-14 over the Buccaneers. Minnesota and Green Bay. 32 to 6, the Vikings over the Packers. The Vikings with a good shot at being a wild card if they can stay unbeaten the rest of the way. Cincinnati wins a very important game. They run their record to 9 and 5. The Patriots run out of luck here this afternoon. For the last three weeks, they've been pulling out miracles, but not today. 31 7, the Bengals with the win. But the Cleveland Browns will be in control in the AFC Central. They will be in first if they beat Buffalo, and they're ahead 21 10. They are in the fourth quarter of that game in Buffalo. Detroit and Pittsburgh, and the Steelers leading the Lions 27 to 17 is the score of that game, and they are in the fourth quarter. And we will continue to look at scores, and we'll have highlights coming your way on the NFL Today postgame show, sponsored by Miller Lite, in a moment. <laughs> It was a day of surprises around the NFL. The New Orleans Saints appeared to be well on their way to beating the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins come back. Danny Marino gets the job done. 31 to 27, they hold off the Saints late in that game for the final score. Denver and Kansas City, the Broncos continue to struggle in Kansas City. 37-10, the Chiefs with the win. St. Louis and Philadelphia are in overtime, and they are tied at 10, and the Cardinals had that field goal block that we showed you a short time ago. The Giants come off a Monday nighter on the West Coast, come all the way back east, go back on the road into the toughest arena in the NFL the last few years, and come away with a very impressive win, 24 to 14. And would you believe it? It is over. The Colts are not going to go 0-16. And moments ago, this was the reason why. They smothered that Atlanta punt, and Ron Meyer's Colts scoop it up and get into the end zone for what turned out to be the winning touchdown. So on this day, the Colts win for the first time this year. The Giants win their most impressive game of the year. And Doug Flutie has a tremendous debut. He is live in Soldier Field. So let's go to Tim Ryan. Tim? All right, Brent, you're looking at Doug Flutie, and he got into action today. He's been waiting to do so. Doug, you have to feel happy about your first completion being a 52-yarder to Willie Gould and then a touchdown pass to Walter Payton, a couple of nice guys to start with. Not too shabby. You have some, <laughs> some great talent out here and just try to use what you have. Uh, first completion I thought would be a short little dump-off ball, wound up missing on a couple of them, and then uh, hit the big one. Well, what does it mean to you now, Doug? You're looking at two more games in the regular season. Uh, obviously, you're in what has become a quarterback derby for the playoff uh, situation. Well, I'm just trying to get myself into a situation where I can help the team going into the playoffs. Uh, I don't plan on taking over or anything like that. I'm just trying to learn the offense as best as possible, get myself in a position so that if I'm needed for the playoffs, I'm ready. It must have been a great feeling to get in there and do something and be involved with the players rather than just practice. It really was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can earn your respect on the practice field as a player, but you don't really earn it all the way until you're out on the field and you contribute. I felt today was the first time that maybe I really belonged. I, I contributed to a win, and, uh, you know, the guys can respect that. 
All right, Doug Flutie, congratulations to you for a good effort in your first real game of the Chicago Bears. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Now let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Tim, thank you very much. And the NFL Today postgame show, sponsored by Miller Lite, continues in a moment. explode and again let me explain should the Bears and the Redskins wind up in a tie and that would take a terrible slump on the part of the Giants for that to happen with the best record in the NFC total points could be a determining factor there was no question that the Bears were running up points this afternoon in Soldier Field Minnesota meanwhile as Jimmy told you still with a chance to get a wild card and they were impressive in Wisconsin this afternoon winning 32 to 6 all right, Cincinnati and New England. The story here, of course, is the Bengals are giving chase to the Browns for a division title, but they also have an eye on a possible wild card. And they go into New England and they stun the Patriots. Now, the Patriots were in a first place tie with the New York Jets. The Jets are underway on the West Coast against the San Francisco 49ers. So both of those divisions in the AFC are completely up in the air. Cleveland and Buffalo, this is the team in first place in the AFC Central. In the fourth quarter, they are holding off Buffalo 21-17, and that has been a tough game up there in Buffalo. Detroit and Pittsburgh, and neither of these teams are going to the playoffs, but Terry, let me ask you this. Uh, the Steelers seem to be showing a little improvement here the last couple of weeks. Well, they have. In the last three weeks, they've played well, but they haven't played well together. Defensive one week, offense the next, but the last three weeks, as Jimmy said earlier in his show, the defense in the last three weeks has certainly improved. Their defense has definitely improved. You remember at the beginning of the year, you told me about their secondary how poor it was, but it's improved the last four games. All right, a quick look at the rest of the scores from around the league this afternoon. That is a final, by the way, the Steelers with that win. This to the final, and uh, how about Ron Meyer? He goes in there and wins 28-23 in Atlanta. That's a very tough loss for Dan Henney. Miami, 7-7, seven and 31-27. Seven, Denver and Kansas City, and you can see that the Chiefs beat the Broncos 37 to 10. St. Louis and Philadelphia are still in overtime. They are tied at 10. We'll update that momentarily. And the Giants with the big win, 24 to 14. And you can see that the Jets and the Niners are underway scoreless in the first quarter. And the NFL Today postgame show tells you that the Oilers and the Chargers are also scoreless. They are in the first quarter. And we will continue with the postgame show here on CBS in just a moment. Here in Washington, the home of the Redskins, that's the final score. The Giants 24, the Redskins 14. And that's the playoff picture, the way it looks now. The Giants are leading the East at 12 and 2. In the Central, it's the Bears at 12 and 2 after their victory. And the Rams, 9 and 4 in the West. For John Madden and Herb Cross, this is Pat Summerall saying so long from the stadium in Washington, D.C., where the final score was 24-14, Giants over the Redskins. Don't forget next.